With YouTube attacking alternative media, please consider supporting the channel via Patreon for just a dollar per month. Link below. Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater, and this is my review, my what I think, of Martin McDonough's Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. A film that I accidentally saw on a whim last night when I went to go see The Post, but it was uh, I got there late and Three Billboards was just starting, so I said, screw it, I'll go watch this. And I'm really glad that I did. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the whole film from start, from start to finish. Uh, although I did have a couple reservations and a couple things that keep it, I think, from a narrative standpoint of taking home best picture uh, and 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 probably even best director. But the acting is is top notch and the acting is what sells this movie for those who were nominated. Otherwise, we again, it's kind of a mixed bag. And this again, it's, it's weird because I'm probably going to be complaining more about the movie uh, than not here. And I don't want you to think that I'm ragging on it from like a I, I dislike the movie perspective. It's more like a, these the little things that kind of eat away at you once the movie's over. And you're like, but why and why and why and why? Like, there's a lot of whys in this movie that ultimately don't matter, I guess, but at the same time are enough that my girlfriend and I spent the the majority of the time on our drive home going, why did this happen? Why did they not do this? So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about a lot of that, but there are going to be spoilers from here on out. And if you think uh, if, uh, you should see the movie, yes, I, I absolutely wholeheartedly believe you should go see Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. It is a very good movie, albeit flawed. Uh, it's not perfect, which is fine. No movie ever is, but I just want to make that abundantly clear. So this is a story of Mildred Hayes, played by Frances McDormand, in probably her best role since Fargo, in my opinion. She's wonderful in the movie. Uh, she, her daughter, Angela, was raped and murdered and burned seven months earlier, and there had been no arrests or any progress on the case uh, inside, uh, or from the police department. And that is why she rents the three billboards outside of town in order to get the, uh, the attention of the chief of police to make sure that he knows that she will keep the public pressure on and she doesn't care what anyone says or what anyone thinks. And that's, that's one of the cool things about it is she's just badass, tough as nails the entire time. Well, also emotionally vulnerable in her own right, but never in a way that other people can see, which is why I do believe that Francis McDormand will take home the Oscar. But the, the chief of police is Chief Willoughby, played by Woody Harrelson, who was also nominated for a supporting actor alongside Sam Rockwell. And, you know, he is going through his own problems. He is dying of pancreatic cancer. And so his mind has more or less been on that and maybe not the job. Uh, and, you know, the town or the police in the town are probably a little bit on the corrupt side, it's a small Missouri town. Uh, racism is still a, a, a hot topic, even though it's tangentially kind of talked about, but not really. And that would be, of course, with the Sam Rockwell character, Dixon, um, who is kind of like the enforcer, the thug. He's the town idiot who became a cop who is protected by the police force for doing things that they normally wouldn't do. And everyone in town relatively knows it. Uh, he doesn't like black people, he doesn't like gay people, and he makes that abundantly clear. Uh, even though it's kind of played up for some kind of comedic effect in the movie that doesn't really make a lot of sense in the context of where it was humorous, so to speak, especially given how the film ends. And so as we go through the film, it's mostly about Mildred trying to keep the pressure on while dealing with the blowback from the town, dealing with the blowback from the police, and also trying to manage her relationship with her son, albeit that is kind of a bit of a side one. He's mad at her for what she did because he's getting a lot of flack about it, but he ultimately understands and she is just trying to get an answer to what happens. Now, the movie itself has a conclusion, albeit one that kind of came out of left field, to be perfectly bluntly honest with you. Now, the whole thing sets up to be, uh, you, you expect a certain ending, so to speak, right? Well, the thing is, Chief Willoughby, Woody Harrelson, like I said, he got cancer, right? And so he, he spends one final day with his family. Uh, goes out, puts a bag over his head and blows his own head, you know, shoots himself in the head, kills himself to not deal with the cancer, to not go through the final few months of all that pain. And this is when the town kind of, I guess you could say, almost turns on Mildred. At least that's what it's meant to imply. And one guy who's kind of creepy goes to the gift store where she works at uh, and, you know, makes comments that allude to this guy being the one who raped, murdered and burned the corpse 
of her daughter. Uh, and so we're led to believe that this is him, even though there's no other early information about this guy. Uh, so then, you know, you also get a nice moment there with the chief's wife, uh, played by Abby Cornish, who I just want to point out out of all the good acting in the movie, she was the worst actor in the entire film, the worst actor in the film. Abby Cornish is not a bad actor. All right. I just saw her in Geostorm the other night. Loved her kick-ass action moment in Geostorm. Thought it was a fun movie. Here, she she's an Australian actress trying to do a British accent that's been living in the South for a while that has a little bit of a twain, but they only give her like one line at a time. So she doesn't get time to really perfect the accent until she delivers uh, the, she the chief's final letter to Mildred. And even then it's like, uh, Abby Cornish, like you could have, why didn't you just have a Southern accent? Like, why did you need a British accent? It just makes no sense. And there's a line, the like one of the final lines between her and Woody Harrelson, where she says he has a nice penis. Um, and it was just this meant to be playful banter, but it's, it's Martin McDonough. So it's kind of like, you know, he did in Bruges, uh, and seven psychopaths, I think. And so his humor is there, but the humor in the context of that moment didn't really work out very well. Um, even though it was a nice scene when she was like, you have a mighty fine cock, Mr. Willoughby. And it's just like, what? Okay, sure. All right, fine. That's something you want to go with. I'm, um, I'm okay with that. Mm, okay, cool. But <laughs> ultimately the, the story's, you know, clearly about Mildred and her story and everything else. And, and, uh, the town isn't happy with her. Like the, the fat dentist complains about the billboards and then she goes to get her teeth looked at and he's like, Oh, one of them is wiggling loose. We're going to need to pull it out. And he wants to go pull it without Novocaine. So she suspects that he's going to do something to her because of the billboard. So she kind of like attacks him, um, with the drill and like drills a hole in his finger, but like, there's no consequences from that. Once chief Willoughby dies, um, the, um, and she feels the town's turning on her. Someone goes and burns the the billboards, uh, which by the way, by the way, I just want to point out the billboards. This is where I don't get this. So the billboards are directly in front of her house. She can see them from her front porch, probably, you know, why it works, but it's also on the outskirts of town, which no one drives by anymore, um, because of the freeway or unless they're retarded, which is kind of the running gag and the wording that they use in the movie. So there's that. And then, and then it shows, uh, because the, 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 the daughter was burned, the corpse was burned. Uh, it shows a burn patch on, on grass, right? Like a couple times, like twice we see the burn patch. It was right underneath the billboards and it's been seven months and the grass is still black as if it's grown over. I mean, obviously I think it's meant to indicate that there was a crime committed there symbolically is what it was going for. But again, it just didn't really make a lot of sense as to, uh, why she was, you know, raped, murdered and burned right outside of her house. I mean, granted kind of in the middle of nowhere, but still there are people nearby. Uh, and then of course it's, it's also exemplified, uh, or I'm sorry, like amplified by the, the last conversation that Mildred had with her daughter, which was, I hope you get raped and killed, right? That was like the, you know, cause the daughter was like, I hope I'm walking and I hope I get raped and killed. And she's like, I hope you get raped and killed too. And this is just their kind of banter with one another. Right. Like, and I get that cause my family and I are very similar, very kind of dark humor when we kind of go at it. Um, and, and that was the last thing she said and that happened. And again, that was touched upon in that scene, but never again, the, the situation with like building up chair, uh, chief Willoughby's character only to have him kill himself uh, didn't really serve much of a purpose. However, Woody Harrelson's performance was fantastic. And his last final kind of screw you to Mildred as just part of the game was that he paid for another month's rental on the uh, billboard uh, as kind of a way to screw with her. And he's like, hey, I hope the town doesn't kill you, you know, so I also really hope you find out who the killer is. Like there was, there was that. And then you have Sam Rockwell's character, Dixon and Dixon, again, like the village idiot becomes a cop. Um, you know, really thought he was great in the movie. Sam Rockwell should get the Oscar for this one. And, uh, but, but Dixon is, is a racist, you know, he's a homophobe. Uh, he doesn't like, uh, you know, Peter Dinklage is in the movie briefly. He doesn't like midgets all of these things. And yet at the end, he kind of has this kind of coming to, I would call it a, a baptism by fire moment where uh, Mildred thinks that the cops burned the, uh, burned the billboards. So she gets Molotov cocktails and starts burning down the police station. But Dixon, who had just been fired for attacking um, the guy who runs Ebbing Advertising, uh, who he believes is a homosexual, like he threw him out a window off the second story floor 
uh, right in front of the police station and right in front of the new chief of police. So he's been, so he's gone. And again, not arrested, not arrested for throwing this dude out of a window and punching a woman in the face and destruction of private property. He just gets fired. That Like, that's it. Like, that, that's how far, again, when I say there's certain things here that don't make a lot of sense, it's you have a kind of a, a take no shit police captain coming in uh, to, 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 you know, to fix things. And yet he doesn't arrest the guy who just assaulted a civilian, uh, two civilians and destroyed private property things in that don't make a lot of sense, right? But ultimately, you know, he's in there reading this letter from, from Willoughby and the, and the letter from Willoughby was good because it was saying like, look, you're a good man at heart. You just need to like, don't be a dumbass, get love in your life, detect things and you can do a good, you can be a good cop, right? Obviously this is meant to inspire him before he acted out of rage and, and got fired. But in that moment, this is where you get this baptism by fire because he's in there as the fire is going off. Uh, the last thing he grabs for jumping out of the window is a case file on Angela, uh, you know, and Mildred's outside and she sees it. So she feels bad. Um, and then, of course, Peter Dinklage covers up the fact that, you know, he says, oh, we're together on a date, uh, blah, 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 blah. She didn't burn the place down. But everyone in town pretty much knows that she did it. Right. Well, then Dixon ends up and this is where I, I'm watching the movie and I'm like, so you got the racist homophobe cop who in this moment in time is now going to become the hero of the story, which I thought was interesting because he encounters the same guy from before who's got, uh, who, who was kind of tormenting Francis McDormand. And here's that guy talk about burning a corpse and guys getting off on it or, you know, burning something. And so he, he gets his DNA by scratching him, uh, gets the crap beat out of him uh, for it ends up, you know, using that as a way to try to uh, get them to solve the case. And of course, at this point, the audience is thinking, oh, damn, this is it. Because what happened was in the final letter to, to, to Mildred from Willoughby, he makes a comment about how, you know, these things sometimes go dead for years until someone says something randomly to somebody else sometime and that blows the case wide open. And so that using that logic or that thread kind of leads into this whole thing. And that's what Sam Rockwell tries to do. Ultimately, it's not the guy. Uh, because he was out of the country, but then, you know, they're talking about it, Mildred and Dixon. And he goes, you know, Dixon says, look, this guy's a rapist. He may not be the rapist right here, but he's definitely a rapist. And then he's like, oh, he's in Idaho. And she's like, well, I'm driving to Idaho in the morning. And he's like, well, you want company as he's holding a shotgun. And she's like, all right. And then they throw the shotgun in the car and they, they, they take off. She admits to, you know, firebombing the, the, um, uh, the police station, he says, well, yeah, who else would it have been? Like, again, no consequences for anyone's actions in this movie. That's the thing I don't understand. So they're going to go kill a guy. They, they, they don't decide whether or not they're going to do it. They leave it ambiguous at the end. They, they don't really feel right about it, but they're still going uh, to, to maybe kill this guy who is a piece of shit. Um, but, you know, that whole thing, it just when the movie was over, I'm just like, man, that was really good. I really like the story. But then it's also like, but you never completed the story. Right. She she got the billboards as a way to put pressure on the police, uh, pressure mounted in different ways. And here she is teaming up with the town idiot who was a cop who was trying to help at the end uh, and ultimately going off to murder someone who isn't guilty of killing her daughter, but is probably guilty of killing somebody else overseas because he was in, in Iraq or Afghanistan or one of those sandy Middle Eastern countries uh, at the time. Uh, that is what uh, Sam Rockwell found out from the new police captain. And so ultimately it's like, okay, so what's the moral of the story here? What's the lesson learned here? Where, where does this take us? Uh, and the answer is nowhere. <laughs> like Francis McDormand and Sam Rockwell should win for their acting. It was wonderful. The movie was well done. It was well paced. It was well put together. Peter Dinklage was great. The guy who played uh, the uh, the kid he's from Get Out also is in this one who did the uh, the advertising. He was great. The A lot of people in the movie were really fantastic and everything really came together. There's a lot of dark humor that was clearly from the director of In Bruges, right? You know, that kind of stuff. But at the same time, at the same time, narratively, there was no real conclusion here. Like we, we, we got the climax and the climax was, you know, they should have just, that should have been the guy who did it. And at the end, Dixon gets vindicated or he's on the path. Like I said, he had baptism by fire. Half his face is burned off because baptism by fire reverses a new man and tries to live a good life without being a racist or a homophobe. And uh, Mildred has the ability to let go and maybe let someone into her life because uh, she's been so guarded for so long. Now, that might be a cheesy Hollywood ending, but it's an ending. 
this was ambiguous. And I, I, I don't know about you, but as a person who's written stories and, and, and written scripts and made movies and, and watches a lot of movies, I hate ambiguous endings that are ambiguous just because they're ambiguous, right? Like these two people jump on a station wagon are driving from Missouri to Idaho, which is not anywhere close by to one another, uh, with a shotgun in tow to go track down a guy who they believe to be a rapist, not the rapist, the perpetrator of this crime who killed her daughter and execute him. It's just, okay, that's where you want to leave it. Like, are you setting up for a sequel? You know, like Mildred and Dixon executioners. I mean, are they going to be like the new boondock saints and whatnot? Like, that's the thing is like uh, the, that particular narrative fallacy, as well as the other problems with the film itself, keep it from, from achieving that level of greatness. Does it need to be wrapped up in a nice, neat little bow? No, but there are other plot lines in the film that just went nowhere. Like her going on a date with Peter Dinklage. Uh, you know, he was a used car salesman with a mullet and a mustache and he was great. Uh, and they had this one date and he kind of says like, you know, he kind of calls her out, but it's like, there's no real, you know, there's, there's no real connection between the two of them. He's trying and she doesn't want it. Her ex-husband played by John Hawks, who pops up a couple times is good, is dating a 19 year old, um, you know, after they broke up and whatnot. And like, that's a running gag about her, you know, working at the zoo, uh, and she's dumb as rocks. And it's like all of these things that ultimately don't add much to the overall story. They're just there. It's a lot of, as Bruce Willis would call it, uh, chaffa, chaff, whatever. Uh, you know, go back to the Kevin Smith story about cop out. It's like, oh, chaffa, you know, chuffa, whatever. Just nonsense that doesn't need to be in the movie. And that is a lot of what's in the, a lot of what's in the problems of three billboards. Now, will I watch the movie again? Absolutely. Just to see the performances because they were that good. And I do want it to win awards, but as, as a result of all the, the narrative issues with it, it keeps, that's what rags on me the most. It keeps nagging at me in my head. It's like, this could be so much better. This could, this could have been so much better. And ultimately it should have been, and we as an audience deserved it, but that's just my opinion. Curious to know what you guys think. If you guys saw the movie, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you guys haven't already, be sure to thumbs up the video, subscribe because <laughs> I post content all the time and uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Have yourself a fantastic day and peace out.